Approximately 20% of Russian troops remain near the Norwegian border from the number that was before Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. This data was announced by the Norwegian authorities. There are maybe 20% or less Russian forces left on our border with Russia than there were before the 24th of February 2022. If Putin thought we were a threat to Russia, he wouldn't have moved his troops into Ukraine to fight a war there. Erik Kristofferson, chief of the Norwegian Armed Forces, at the briefing. The number of Russian troops on the border with Finland, which became a NATO member this year, has also been reduced. Also, the length of the Russian-Finnish border is many times longer – 1,300 kilometers. According to experts, such Russian behavior exposes the propaganda narrative about the threat from the North Atlantic Alliance. Russia is not capable of confronting NATO, that's obvious. So any Russian narratives about NATO expansion threatening Russia is a bogeyman or for the domestic market to tell Russians who are watching these propaganda stories that they are threatened by NATO. But really, Russia is threatened by the oligarchy and their tsarism that is using Russia's vast riches territory. The real threat for the Russian leadership now is defeat in the war against Ukraine. Russia had to bear its flanks in NATO borders because the occupation army does not have enough manpower or military equipment to wage war against Ukraine. This is the data from Western and Ukrainian intelligence services. This is also indicated by the course of hostilities, experts say. We can say they don't have enough troops to fight the war in Ukraine. They have to withdraw their trained troops from wherever they can and continue the actions in Ukraine that they are carrying out. They are trying to advance in the Kupiansk Liman direction, although they are not very successful, and the intensity of fighting there has already decreased. And they also are trying to hold the defense in all directions, where we continue our offensive actions. Due to lack of weapons, Russia is forced to move military equipment to the front, even from the most remote regions. Yuko Izumi, a lecturer at Tokyo University, suggests that many old tanks and howitzers from a military base in Sorzen Sakhalin have been sent to the war against Ukraine. They were followed by S-300 missile systems from the occupied by Russia Kuril Islands that belong to Japan. According to analysts, it is in the area of air defense that Russian army is experiencing the biggest shortage. We have often, especially in recent times, been destroying their artillery, destroying their surface-to-air missile systems. The military-industrial complex can produce warriors' weapons, tanks, artillery systems and everything else, but they can produce less than they lose. So naturally, they have to pull something from other territories, far from the front line. As a result of the gradual reduction in the number of air defense systems of the Russian occupiers, their military facilities in the occupied territories where the Ukrainian long-range missiles reach and the rear facilities where drones reach remain uncovered. However, even with the help of air defense systems delivered from all over Russia, it is not possible to cover the entire sky, experts say. The best demonstration of this is the successful attacks of Ukrainian defense forces on airfields, command posts, troop concentrations and other military targets of the enemy. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Vasil Panasiuk, UATV News.